Hello and welcome to Hacks, where we try to simplify cybersecurity. So we're continuing the Port Swigger Web Academy videos today, and we are looking at the second SQL injection lab. If you're going through the learning paths, then this might not be the second lab for you, but if you're on the all labs section, then this is the one in the second position. So SQL injection attack, finding a column containing text. This lab contains an SQL injection vulnerability in a product category filter. The results from the query are returned in the application response so you can use a union attack to retrieve data from other tables. To construct such an attack, you first need to determine the number of columns returned by the query. You can do this using the technique you learned in the previous lab. The next step is to identify a column that is compatible with string data. The lab will provide a random value that you need to make appear within the query's results to solve the lab. Perform an SQL injection attack that returns the additional row containing the value provided. The technique helps determine which columns are compatible with string data. So if we look at the application, we can see that it's got a navigation menu at the top, nice logo, and it looks like we got two, possibly three columns, one containing the title, one containing the price, and buttons containing view details. Could be a column, might not be. So we need to return this string in the response by performing a union SQL injection and in order to do that the first thing we need to do is head over to burp and throw intercept on and then we can click one of the links which should capture the request in burp now in order to test sort of different payloads and build up to the payload that you want what I like to do is I send it to repeater as it just makes structuring the syntax a lot easier so in order to do this one I'm going to do comma union Plus select. Is that spell right? S E L E C T. Yep. Uh, plus no. And then I'm going to comment it out. Now, this should, if there's one column, it should give me a 200 error. If it isn't one column, we should get a 500 error. And we get a 500 error. So, what we can do now is we can add another null to see if there's two columns. And we get another 500 error. So, let's try three columns. And we get a 200 OK response. So we know that there's three columns being rendered on the page. So what we need to do now is we need to find out which ones contain text. And the way we can do this is we can just submit a string to it. So we can, instead of putting null, we can say A because we know A's like a string character. We do A, 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 A. We could just send the string we want to, but I want to show like the sort of trouble, the process to go through to get there. Um, but we can send that. Uh, if it doesn't allow text, we'll get a 500 error. If it does allow text, we'll get a 200 OK. And we see we get a 500 error. So we change this back to a null. And we try it with the other one. And as you can see, we now get a 200 OK message because this column accepts text. We can also try it with the other one. So let's put that back to null so one was the title one was a disc like a, the price i think that was probably the first table was the price the first column was the price the second was the description and the third was the button i believe but that doesn't accept text either so we know that our we know that our null needs and our, our second null needs to be the string so we just put the quotes we head back to the page we get our string and we throw it in here. And if you send that request, that will complete the lab for you. And that's it. It allows you, so that's how you structure a union based attack using null values. The reason why it uses null is because most columns accept the value null. So most different types of databases, SQL, Oracle, they all recognize null. Um, and then you just use strings to determine which of your columns can contain strings. And then further, you can leverage that to pull data from other tables and other columns into your column that supports text or if it's int, it can support integers. And that's how you solve the lab. Anyway, I hope you found the video informative and you liked it. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, maybe subscribe. Kind regards.